As we move into our next book, The Pastor's Ministry, Biblical Priorities for Faithful Shepherds, uh, by my friend Brian Croft, I want to make sure that as we cover this, we are looking at a theology of care. When we talk about pastoral care, we're uh, dividing that into a theology of care, which is going to cover several areas. It's going to cover the foundations of that, uh, the focus of that, and also the fundamental truths of that as far as faithfulness. So to introduce that uh, for this first lecture, I'd like to focus on the introduction in the first few chapters uh, where uh, Dr. Croft, who is a professor at Southern Theological Seminary, um, is talking about pastoral care uh, as our true biblical calling. First Peter chapter 5, verses 2 through 4 says, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples of, to the flock. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will not fade away. So as we look into true the true biblical calling of the pastors, pastor, uh, we can answer this by answering four questions. And if you look at 1 Peter 2, I mean 5, 2 through 4, it answers those. What? What is the calling of a pastor, the true calling of pastors? That is to be shepherds of God's flock. That's what we're to do. Now, who does that cover? Well, those that are under your care, those that God has called you to pastor. Too many times we try to pastor those that God hasn't called us to pastor. In this specific instance, what we're talking about is pastoring those that God has placed us as their pastor. How do we do that? Well, we watch over them, not because we must, but because we're willing, as God wants us to be. We're not going to lord it over them, and, uh, but we're going to minister and be an example to the flock. We're going to minister to their needs. We're going to understand those truths. And that's what we'll be talking about over these uh, next few weeks. When? Well, long enough that uh, God has called us to, to do this until he comes again. When the chief shepherd appears, we'll receive the crown of glory that never fade away. I believe the call of God is irrevocable. When you're called of God to be a pastor, to be a shepherd, God calls you that for a lifetime. He is wanting you to be that shepherd and to minister to those needs that are there. So when we understand the pastor's true biblical calling, uh, it is foundational in what we are. Now, I want to lay that out by looking at the 10 key priorities that we're going to be covering uh, in this study through this book. Again, it'll be divided into parts. Uh, part one, we'll be talking about the foundation, and that will be uh, number one, two, and three. I'll go over that in just a second. Uh, part two will be the focus. That will be the next four, four, five, six, and seven. And then finally, our faithfulness, eight, nine, and ten. Now, in these, I'm going to take uh, some liberties to share some truths that are from me as a, as a pastor, uh, 40 years of experience uh, doing pastoral ministry, and I uh, hope I can provide some uh, interesting thoughts and uh, directions that will help you in, in your uh, biblical theology of uh, being a pastor. Well, let's look at each one of these and uh, as we talk through them. Number one, we're talking about guarding the truth. Now, of course, we know that a pastor must be committed to the Word of God. Uh, our, our whole point is that we are to uh, commit ourselves that God's Word is absolute truth that it is infallible, that it is inerrant. And we must be willing to preach it, teach it, defend it, uh, even contrary to the culture. We cannot uh, compromise when it comes to the Word of God. We are to guard the truth as the absolute, infallible truth of God. Number two, then, we're to preach it. A uh, big part of being a pastor is also being a preacher. And a preacher must faithfully preach the whole counsel of God's Word, make sure that uh, we're carefully explaining the meaning of the text. We're, we're expositorily and in, in, in learning how to rightly divide God's truth and understanding. Because 
we want to do it in such a way to where people are doing what I call inductive Bible study or inductive preaching, where you are uh, looking at the truth, you're doing an examination of God's truth, you're observing what the Word says, then you are interpreting that Word uh, and, and making sure that you're able to uh, interpret what God's Word says, and then you're to teach the people to apply that Word, and so they're almost always uh, is going to be an application uh, of the Word of God when you observe it, when you interpret it, and then when you uh, preach it faithfully that where people can apply it. And then finally, in this first section of the foundation, we'll talk about praying for the flock. Of course, we guard the truth, we preach the Word, but we pray. Uh, a pastor should be an intercessor. Uh, I pray for my congregation by name many times. I know who's in the congregation on a Sunday and a lot of times I'll just kind of go through and think of each pew. And sometimes I'll go into the sanctuary and just walk through and think who who sits where, and I'll just be praying specifically for them. And then I've I've tried to make a list at home to where I can pull it out and, and go through and think of those that are going to be in church the next Sunday. Of course, congregation is not super large, and so you're praying for uh, 100, 150 people. You can, you can literally call them by name and ask God to speak to them in a special way. So pray for the flock. When we move into part two, we're going to be talking about our focus. And, and in this, I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the uh, interventions that we'll do, the theology of care, your pastoral referrals, um, uh, specifically in the area of visitation, of, of comforting, and of caring. Uh, we're to set an example. We, you can't take anybody any further than you are yourself. So if you're going to teach your people to... Uh, have a godly family, you've, you've got to have a godly family. If you're going to teach them to uh, have a great quiet time, personal devotional life, you've got to have a personal devotional life. If you're going to teach them and train them uh, uh, how to get along with people, you've got to get along with people. So that righteous behavior that you'll have is an example. Visiting the sick. Always visit those that are sick. One of, one of my rules, one of my customs is that if someone is going to be in the hospital and they're going to uh, have surgery and, and I know that they're going to be put under anesthetic, I'm always there with them to pray because you never know what might happen. Uh, and I always try to get by and visit my sick on a regular basis to make sure they know their pastor cares. I uh, think you've heard the old saying, uh, people don't really care how much you know till they know how much you care. And then comforting the grieving. You see, in the face of death, what a great opportunity to minister to the needs of those around you to, to be able to uh, comfort them and to, to spend that time with them. And then finally, care for the widows. You're going to uh, end that. This much neglected biblical teaching says that we are responsible and uh, that we have to model that care and take care of those that have been widowed uh, in, in their lives. The final section that we'll be talking on is our faithfulness, the faithfulness to confront sin, to encourage the weaker sheep, and the identification and the training of leadership. Uh, pastors need to confront sin and lead the church in, in discipline. That's tough, but it's something we're going to talk about and learn a little bit more. The encouragement of the weaker sheep uh, to help them to grow and to, to, to mentor, to disciple, to train. And then your identification and training of leaders, you know, hard thing, particularly if you don't have anybody that's volunteering, but that's one of the things you can uh, encourage people to, to get involved and tell them that you see those gifts in them and you'd like to train them and help them to grow. Now, let me say in closing of this, of this uh, opening lecture that uh, there are going to be other things that we're going to be talking about uh, in this. And uh, not everything's going to be covered in these areas. So I'm going to hopefully uh, spin off to the different uh, sections of, of things that you'll be interested in, in as far as uh, that basic knowledge of taking care of yourself, the dynamics of your visits, uh, helping people in crisis, and then that theology of care, intervention, intervention and referral as necessary. God bless you as we get into this portion of our study uh, in basic pastoral care.